So we're all in agreement. <laughs> or something. It is almost perfect. Okay, so somebody who says larger. Oh, someone said E. <laughs> we won't go to that person. <laughs> someone who says larger. Okay, is the force of the string on B larger than, smaller than, or equal to the force of the hand on A? Is there uh, an explanation for larger? Mm -hmm. The hand is pushing box A, then the two are going to move, assuming the string is, doesn't stretch. Right. Then they're going to move at the same acceleration. Good. Um, because B is more massive, it takes more force to get the same acceleration. Okay, so she says she's going to assume, and I think this is a good assumption, the string is not stretching. So if the hand accelerates A to the right, then it also has to accelerate B to the right. But B is more massive than A. So therefore, there will be more force on B than there will be force on A for the same acceleration. Is that a fair statement? OK. Is there somebody willing to say equal, which seems to have been the majority view? Somebody willing to explain? Yeah, Marcy. Um, well, I think that the force isn't uh, going to be m of a times the acceleration of a, since b and a are moving as a system together. So yeah. So, um, so the force that the the force that um, a is exerting on the string or whatever. Uh huh. Okay, so she says the force that A is exerting on B by the string must be equal to the force that B is exerting on A because of the string. Is that true? And how will we know? Well, let, according to our recipe, we're supposed to be able to carve this thing up. Uh, I've got to get my labels right. This is B. And this is A. OK, so there's my system. And now, now I want to isolate some part of it. Let me isolate the string. OK, so here I write the string. And I'm supposed to put all the forces that are on the string. So what forces are there on the string? So on this end, there will be a tension at A. On this end, there will be a tension at B. Are they the same? Yeah. Why? Suppose that I pretend that the string has a little bit of mass, really little. Are there any other forces on, really little, any other forces on the string? OK, there is gravity. I'm going to neglect it. OK, acceleration, did I hear that? But that's not a force. So these are the only force. The only thing that touches the string to communicate the force are the contact here and the contact there. So if I pick this direction to be positive for the acceleration, then I can follow the program. I've got my isolation diagram, and I can deduce an equation from this. So the, num, the, the sum of the forces on my object, which I've now chosen to be the string, must be equal to the mass of the string times its acceleration. OK, so force Ta. TB is going backwards, so I need to add it in in that direction, is equal to the little bit of mass times A. Now let me say that that mass is really, really small. In fact, it's going to 0. Then what is true? TA must be equal to TB. Okay? If, on the other hand, imagine that this is a big, heavy cable, then they wouldn't be the same because 
I would not be able to neglect the mass and TA would have to be bigger than TB in order to accelerate the mass of the cable. But because the string is very ma is, is massless approximately, then we can argue that the tension on the two ends of the string must be equal. So now we go back to Marcy. So Marcy says the force of A on B is equal to the force of B on A. So does that imply that the force of the hand must be equal to the force of the string on B? Anyone for answer B? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. So how about we? One of the things that the art here is to pick what system you want to consider. So I want you now for the moment to consider the system to be. A, string, and B, okay? What are the external forces on this system? The Only the hand, okay? What will then be the acceleration of the system? So how would I get the acceleration of the whole system? Force of the hand must be equal to all the mass times the acceleration. All the mass is MA plus MB. What must be the force on B in order for it to have the same acceleration? Just MB times A. Okay, so the tension force T on B must be equal to the mass of B times the acceleration A. What must be the net force on A? How fast is A accelerating? A. a. <laughs> Not a very good choice of <laughs> MA times A. <clears throat> and so if I isolate A, what are the forces on it? So I have F hand applied here to the right. I have T A to the left. To be fair, I also am going to worry about gravity that goes down. So that would be M A times G. And one more, some sort of reaction force just like this table is supplying a force so that the coffee mug doesn't go down. I need a normal force, this is getting a little busy there, up, okay? So in the direction I have chosen for the acceleration, what is, I project all the forces on that direction. I have, I don't have to worry about this one, it's perpendicular. I don't have to worry about that one, it's perpendicular. In this direction I have only the force of the hand. That one's backwards. It's going to the left. I have to pay attention to the direction. Minus TA. That must be equal to the mass, MA, 
times the acceleration. So what's the right answer? Okay, so what's the right answer? Should we vote again and just see? <laughs> okay, you can watch yourselves vote now. I, I can see a flaw in my, uh, my method here. Can we do that a little bit more? No. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> people chickened out when they weren't getting kudos for it. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the answer is smaller since the hand must accelerate all the mass, whereas the string only has to accelerate mass B, which is less than the sum. So therefore, the force on B is smaller than the force of the hand on A.